hey there, space explorer. You hear about this whole moon goo thing. So yeah, making headlines, right? Like something strange moving under the moon's surface. Which, okay, yes, is as cool as it sounds. So we're doing deep dive, gotta break it down. Like, what's the actual science saying? We got the research from NASA, the University of Arizona, the whole shebang. Gotta figure out what this moon goo actually is, you know? Yeah, this is, like, seriously groundbreaking. We're talking about the first ever time. Like, the first measurements ever of the moon's gravity changing. Hold on, hold on. Back up a sec. The moon has tides. It does. Yeah. Think about it, right? Mm. Earth's gravity, it's pulling on the moon. And the sun's gravity, too. Same as the moon pulls on, like, our oceans. So it creates a stretching effect on the moon. A bulging. Not as intense as ocean tides, obviously but enough to be measurable, changes its gravitational field. Okay, I'm with you so far. So where does this, like, moon goo come in? That's where it gets really cool. See, by studying those tidal forces, how the moon reacts to them, basically, scientists, they've discovered this layer way down deep in the moon. Mm -hmm. And it's more, uh, how do I put this? More flexible than we ever thought. Flexible. Yeah, like a zone at the bottom of the moon's mantle Less viscous. Think uh, think of the difference between, like, solid rock and, I don't know, a lava lamp or something. Lava lamp. Okay, that's uh, that's a visual I can get behind. But wait, I thought we had the whole moon layer thing figured out. Mm. Crust, mantle, core, right? Where's this new layer fit into all that? You're right. We thought we did. But that's what's so crazy about this. It flips the script, totally changes our assumptions. Imagine, right, you got your layers, like you said. But then... Bam! You slip in a layer of this, like, lava lamp stuff yeah. right, be between the mantle and the core. That's our moon goo. Uh -huh. Or, well, the scientists call it the low viscosity zone, LBZ. Catchy. So this isn't just, like, a random thing. This really changes how we think about the moon's insides. Absolutely, yeah. We used to be like, oh, moon, geologically dead, basically a cold rock, but... This LVZ, it's like, hold on, there's more going on down there. Especially when you think about what's keeping this layer so gooey. Okay, yeah, you got me curious now. What are they saying about what it's made of and what's keeping it from, you know, hardening up? Well, the research is pointing to. It's likely made of this mineral ilmenite. Basically, think of it as cosmic leftovers, right, from the very beginning when the solar system was forming. Now, what keeps it all liquidy, best guess, internal heat sources in the moon like the moon's got its own internal heat exactly it's like what earth has you know drives volcanoes and all that but like way smaller scale way slower on the moon so hold up we're saying the moon might have its own internal engine something that's mm. keeping this layer flowing for like billions of years that's the idea yep makes you see the moon a bit differently huh totally who knew the moon had it going on like that okay this is already blowing my mind we're just getting started but before we go too far What's the big takeaway? Why should we care about warm minerals deep inside the moon? Like, what's the so what for everyone listening? That's the big question, right? And the answer is, this changes everything. How the moon formed, how it's changed over time. It could even tell us about what's in store for the moon in the future. And for starters, it's a huge deal for any future missions to the moon. Like, building a moon base. I knew it. How would this gooey layer affect building on the moon? Well, imagine trying to design a base, right? Without knowing about this layer at all, we have to figure out how it moves, how it acts with the rock around it. Could be a huge help, or it could be a disaster waiting to happen. So we need to update our moon maps before we start breaking ground. Exactly. And there's more. Remember those ilmenites, the things this layer is probably made of? Yeah, the cosmic leftovers. Right. Studying those could tell us about how our solar system formed. You're saying this moon do... Is like a time capsule. Exactly. It's like digging into the very beginning of our planet and tons of others. And here's the real kicker. If the moon's got this, other planets probably do too. Other planets with goo. This is huge. We used to think of planets like a layer cake. Crust, mantle, core. But it's way more complicated than that. This moon goo proves it. Wow. I am learning so much today. This is why I love doing this show. Me too. And to think it all started with an article about moon goo. That's science for you. Always full of surprises. Okay, this is already a lot to process, but we're not done yet. Stick with us as we keep going deeper into the world of moon goo and learn what it means for the future of space. We're back, and I gotta say, my mind is still buzzing from that last bit. This moon goo, the LVZ, it's not just some weird thing inside the moon. It could change how we see planets everywhere, you know? It's a game changer, and we're only just starting to grasp what it all means. Like, remember how we were talking about moonquakes? This changes how we understand those, too. Oh, right, right. Explain that. How does the gooey layer, like, 
mess with moonquakes. I always thought those were just from the moon cooling down and shrinking, you know, over billions of years. That's what we thought. But now, imagine this slow movement in the LVZ. Like, picture it creeping along way down there. That could be making its own quakes, its own seismic activity, like plate tectonics on Earth, but like way slower, way bigger scale. So some of those moon quakes, they're not just the moon shrinking, but this goo moving around. Exactly. It could explain why some of them last longer, go deeper than we thought possible. Wow. Okay, so this isn't just changing the moon's structure for us, but how it acts, too. Exactly. And get this, it gets me really pumped thinking about... If the moon has this goo with all this going on inside, what about other moons out there? Bigger ones like Europa, Titan. Those are the ones with the oceans under the ice, right? You think they might have this layer too? Well, it's a real possibility. And if they do, that changes things. Like how habitable those oceans are, maybe even if there's life down there. We always thought about if there's water, right? Water equals life, maybe. But this goo... It means we got to look inside a planet, too, not just the surface. It's like we've been staring at the outside of the house, never bothering to look in the windows. And that's what makes this moon goo so important. It reminds us we don't know everything, even out the moon, right there in our sky. So much more to learn, to explore. This is why I love doing this show, you know? Yeah. Taking these crazy discoveries and really figuring out, like, what does it all mean? Not just for science, but for us. Right. And to think, it all started with, hey, there's goo in the moon. You never know where science is going to take you. For sure. And speaking of surprises, if this LVZ is real and it's always moving, even slowly, uh -huh. what does that mean for all the plans to, you know, mine the moon someday? Yeah. Excellent question. And it's something scientists are trying to figure out right now. On one hand, knowing about the goo could make mining easier. Imagine it's like the moon is already concentrating certain minerals for us because of how the goo moves. It's like the moon's doing the work for us. Haha, <laughs> in a way, yeah. But on the other hand, we got to think about building anything on a surface that's, you know, shifting around even slowly over time. That's a huge challenge for engineers. We can't just show up and tell the moon what to do, right? <sighs> got to learn to work with it. Exactly. That's why studying this LVZ is so important. What's it made of? How does it move? Will it stay the same for millions of years? We need answers before we start digging too deep. So from moon goo to moon mining, it's all connected. But hold on, something's been bugging me. If this layer is so important, how are we just finding out about it now? Ah, uh, great question. That's science for you. Just because something's nearby, like the moon, doesn't mean it spills its secrets easily. It takes time, smarts, and sometimes new technology is the key. So what was the new tech that finally let us see this goo? Ah, that's the perfect question. We'll get into those incredible missions right after this. We're back, ready to find out how they actually discovered this moon goo, right? Yeah, like I was saying, looking deep inside any planet or moon, it's tough. But the moon, it's extra tricky. Think about how we study Earth's insides, right? Seismometers everywhere, listening for earthquakes. And even then, took us, like, centuries to figure it out. Okay, so we can't just cover the moon in those things. Plus, moon's way less active than Earth, right? Yeah. Fewer moonquakes to learn from. Exactly. For the longest time, all we had were those seismometers from the Apollo missions. Just a handful of them, all bunched up in one spot. But this new research, they used something totally different. Data from two missions, DRAIL and LRO. Okay, now those are some sci-fi names. What do they do? All right, so DRAIL, right. Instead of waiting for moonquakes, it used two spacecraft, twins actually, orbiting the moon, super close together, flying in formation, and they'd measure like the tiniest changes in the distance between them. Wait, they could measure that? How tiny were we talking? Tiny. But that's how they mapped the moon's gravity, in super high resolution. So even the little bulges from the tides, they picked that up. Yep. And those little changes, they're like a code, right? Tell you how dense the stuff is under the surface, what it's made of. That's how the LVZ, the moon goo, finally showed up. Wow, so these two little spacecraft dancing around the moon, they basically gave us an x-ray of what's inside. Exactly. And LRO, the other mission, it was crucial too. While DRAIL did the gravity thing, LRO mapped the surface, like insanely detailed maps. So they worked together, one looking deep, one seeing the surface. Yeah. Ruled out any other explanations for what Trail was seeing. That's teamwork. And that's why I'm so hyped for the future of moon exploration. We've got new missions coming up, like Viper. It's going to be searching for water ice at the moon's south pole. Water ice on the moon. Hold on. How's that connected to all this? Remember we were talking about using resources on the moon? Water ice, that's huge. Drinking water, oxygen, even rocket fuel. 
And just like with the LVZ, got to know what's going on inside the moon to find that ice, get to it safely, use it right. So we're going from moon goo to moon ice mining. <laughs> Wild. Right. Never a dull moment. This has been an awesome deep dive. Before we wrap up, what's a, like the one big thing you hope people take away from all this? For me, it's that we're always learning. We think we've got the moon figured out, our neighbor in space, then bam, moon goo, something totally new changes everything. Got to keep our minds open, keep exploring, right? Exactly. Well said. That's it for our deep dive into moon goo. Thanks for exploring with us. And remember, keep looking up.